Welcome back to Big Riff Energy. Tuesday, March 12th. This is episode uh, 52. I want to let everybody know right out of the gate. Did my first Zoom podcast. It'll be coming out this Saturday. Spoke with the mighty TJ Childers from Inter Arma, who have a new album coming out in April. And it was a lot of fun, man. It was a lot of fun. So be on the lookout Saturday, 10 a.m. Central Time. That episode will be coming out. Went and saw the Tank Crimes Brain Squeeze tour in San Antonio. I believe the tour is still going on for another week or so. And what an experience, man. DIY till they die. Uh, Scotty Tank Crimes and Tony from Municipal Waste put the whole thing together between the two of them. Uh, I'm sure they had help with agents and stuff like that, but they, those two guys masterminded it. I got to talk to Scotty for a minute. I hadn't seen him in, I want to say five years or something. Uh, and it was a great night, man. Dead heat opened the show. Uh, they sounded really good. I saw them a while back at the Mohawk outside and sometimes sound can kind of be fishy there. Uh, but this show is at the Paper Tiger in San Antonio, and they were crushing, man. It was awesome. Reminded me of old school suicidal tendencies. I love the chorus pedal on the guitars. Uh, with the right mix, those guys are real heavy. A lot of fun. Uh, Necrot was up next. One of my favorite current death metal bands. And man, those guys have sort of... I mean, we've all been through the ringer since the plague years, but... I'll just say it was nice to see those three dudes back on stage doing their thing. What a fun band. One of the most fun death metal bands ever, for sure. They got the Motorhead old school. I don't know. It's heavy and the subject matter is evil and it's definitely a death metal band, but there's just something so fun about it every time I see them. So it was great to see those Dudes doing their thing again. They have a new record coming out on Tank Crimes this year as well. Lifeless Birth, I think it's called. Single I heard was great. Uh, Ghoul played. Great times. Uh, <laughs> just before Ghoul's set, I actually found Scotty from Tank Crimes over by Merch. We got to catch up for a minute. And hey, I want to shout out everybody that said hi, uh, listeners of this podcast and fans of the music and, and all that stuff. Uh, really appreciate you guys, man. And San Antonio, man, every time I go, it's like a, it's like a big metal family reunion or something. But I, I got to see the coolest thing happen. I was talking to Scotty and a uh, shout out to Ben and the Fulci shirt. Uh, I saw this dude, Ben recognized Scotty from tank crimes and just uh, express his gratitude and, appreciation and excitement for all the work and energy and dedication that Scotty puts into extreme music, this thing we love so much. Uh, dude, Scotty, if you guys don't know him, follow Tank Crimes on social media. Uh, he does a great job on there of just like figuring out how to apply the boots on the ground DIY old school punk passion and work ethic to social media. He does a better job of that than anybody else I'm aware of. And, uh, man, at the end of the night, Phil from municipal waste showed me his like, uh, tour manager, whatever toolbox. And it was just like a street team kit with like, it was all perfectly organized. It had like flyers and tank crime stickers and other stuff we won't mention. But uh, yeah, I, I got to see this dude, Ben, just like really pour out his appreciation for Scotty and for tank crimes. And uh, then Scotty had to run because he was playing the monster on stage with Ghoul, spraying everybody with fake blood, wearing a lot of hats. <laughs> There's nothing he can't do, man. So... God, it was good to see you, Scotty. It's been way too long, man. Uh, yeah, and then Municipal Waste played, and I don't know how many times I've seen them now. You know, Spirit of Drift was booked on 
pretty much all the same festivals on all the same days last June. So it almost felt like we were on tour with Municipal Waste. It was like one of the best two weeks of playing music I've ever had. Uh, just some of the best dudes. And I, I've never seen them play a set that wasn't like completely over the top. So much energy, so much fun, so much aggression, just like everything you want in punk rock crossover, old school thrash metal, crowd surfing, circle pit, like high fiving. Um, you know, they've been a band for almost 25 years now, which like blows my mind. I'm sure it blows their mind too, but. Uh, I don't know if it's like all all of our mutual arrested development that we've suffered probably starting about 25 years ago, but um, they just seem like a new band to me still. Like they have the, they have the novelty, not in a bad way, just like um, that new excitement and that new passion uh, of like a thing that is still climbing up into the stratosphere, you know, and the guys personally still have the same energy and the love and the excitement and the, the riffs, the riffs and the playing and the vocal power of young men, dudes in their twenties, you know, uh, we have to put municipal waste in the all time great thrash metal band list. We have to, there's no choice. What other band, what other thrash band has been around for 20, 25 years. Put out how many album? How many albums are they on now? One, two, three, five, like seven, six, seven. And they're all good. They never had a Saint Anger. No offense. They never had a Diabolus and Musica. No offense. They never had a Risk. Um, you know, I put Overkill in that category. I would put Testament in that category. Testament slides in that in that category. Overkill definitely is firmly in that category. I may be forgetting somebody, but uh, Municipal Waste is one of the greatest thrash bands of all time, and San Antonio is a perfect place to experience that tour. Um, what else, man? I want to talk about uh, an Austin band. I'm going to do the album discussion thing at the end here, uh, but this band, Mean Mistreater that I've been hearing about. Uh, they recorded with my buddy Jeff Henson, who is helping me finish up this new record I've been working on right now. Should be done being mixed like today. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I met these guys and gals randomly at the Tank Crimes show. Been seeing a lot about them, been hearing a lot about them. And, uh, Okay, so Paper Tiger in San Antonio, there's like two courtyards. One of them, merch was set up, and one of them was just kind of the hangout area. And I was hunting down the dudes in Necrot because I haven't seen them in so long. And found Sonny. And man, side note, was reminded that I, I've known Sonny for almost 20 years, dude. We always talk about it. But we met at Kane's Ballroom. I was like 17 years old. And Sonny from Necrot was on tour with a band he was in called Watch Them Die that I highly recommend listening to. Uh, they were sort of at the forefront of like the old school thrash revival. And there were there were other elements. There was like traditional metal type guitars and and maybe even like a little bit of death metal. But Watch Them Die was definitely like ahead of the big time thrash revival like municipal waste and uh warbringer and all those kind of bands uh and yeah sunny was on tour with that band uh direct support i believe to soylent green probably 2005 uh i went and saw him at kane's ballroom and that's the first time we met been really good friends ever since anybody that knows sunny knows he's like one of the best dudes out there uh, also played in Saviors, another great band. Uh, the last two Saviors records are actually two of my favorite modern metal records, I would say. I think it's Palace of Vision and Accelerated Living. Uh, yeah, those two. But anyway, found Sonny, 
and he was sort of catching up with a group of people uh, who I didn't know, and we all introduced ourselves and went about our evening and then uh, found Chad, the drummer from Necrot, and he was talking to the same folks. Uh, and they all mentioned they were, you know, from the West Coast and had moved out here within the last few years. And I don't know how it was brought up, but after hanging with these folks pretty much all night, I realized that it was the people from Mean Mistreater, Small World. And uh, they knew all the dudes on the tour, especially the West Coast guys, you know, known each other for decades. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk about, I just thought that was a really cool Small World thing, you know. So I'm going to talk about their record there at the end uh, of the episode. And I'm bringing up their band camp just so I don't get anything horrifically wrong information-wise. Yo, thank you all to everyone who sent a contribution to the channel. Everybody's been really cool about it, actually, and it's already seem, seeming to pay off and uh, be an exciting thing for everybody. Literally at heavy art talks check out his youtube channel it's really great he talks to heavy metal and horror artists album artists lee you should try and get joe patagno on man uh i don't know if he does interviews or not but i might try and talk to him and see if he's interested in doing something like that because we don't have enough joe patagno interviews and i feel like that would be really cool uh Lee, I'm going to apologize in advance here. Sent me a strong payment here for this question, so you're at the top of the list. But, um, man, you somehow managed to pick five bands slash artists for me to talk about that I, like, believe it or not, don't really have much to say about <laughs> and don't really have, like, f feelings one way or another Uh so if you are completely unsatisfied with my answer to your question, uh, you did send me enough for a couple, so I, I'll be on the lookout. If you have another question, I, we can just apply a, a credit or something. But um, <laughs> I don't know how you, you managed to pull off some kind of like reverse miracle here and figure out five musical artists that I, I can't really say that much about. Um, but here's the email. Hey, Nate, I always love when you talk about non-metal stuff. Music-wise, shows the depths of your taste, and I always find metalhead tastes in regular music fascinating. My request is pick one or two of the five artists listed. Speak about your relationship with their music, positive or negative. If you have one, they may be odd picks. Yeah, dude, for the most part, I don't have one. But, okay, guy number one, Todd Rundgren. Um, I think... If this is the guy I'm thinking of, I've, oh yeah, a wizard, a true star. Okay, so, man, I don't want you to take anything that I say as a personal attack against your taste, Lee. But this is one of those things that somebody told me to check out Todd Rundgren, what a genius he was, and all that, and... Yeah, the record everybody was saying is called A Wizard, A True Star. It's got really cool cover art, so I could see why you would like that. Um, I don't know. This kind of stuff, to me, it, yeah, I'm looking at his Wikipedia right now. And I, I just, <laughs> my eyes focused on this paragraph. Rundgren returned to New York and for the first time in his life started experimenting with psychedelic drugs. To his recollection, this included DMT, mescaline, psilocybin, and possibly LSD. Um, yeah, and then he thought the writing on his previous album was formulaic and born from laziness, so then he tried to get more eclectic. Uh, I'm all about experimentation with music and experimentation, especially with psychedelics. I wouldn't say drugs in general, because some of that shit just kills you, but, um, I don't want to hear a guy figuring out the very first steps of doing psychedelics and writing music. <laughs> and that's what this album is. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's genius. I think it's fucking pretentious and uh, like good for him that he's like expanding his psychic horizons and his musical horizons. 
Uh, but I don't want to fucking hear it. Shit's annoying, man. Uh, but th- I mean, that being said, I'm not really into like anything bordering on artsy fartsy Andy Warhol, New York scene. Uh, I don't even really like the Beatles, man. Uh, I mean, I respect them. I don't really care all that much about David Bowie. I've heard some Bowie here and there where I'm like, okay, I get why people worship this guy. Um, anything anything coming close to like Lou Reed or Yoko Ono, I'd rather put a fucking ice pick in my eardrum. Like, and this guy kind of gives me that. I I don't know. I one thing I will do with this question just to so to not like completely disappoint, I'll give an artist who I think might be similar, but that I would prefer a lot more. And in this case, it would be Gene Clark, no other. Um, Gene already had years of psychedelic experimentation under his belt by by the time he made that. And he also had years of uh, writing like actual genius level songs because how genius is your song if nobody can remember anything about it and there's no melodies that get stuck in, you know. Uh, And maybe, maybe Todd Rundgren has that stuff, but... I'm not about to invest the t- enough time to find out. Okay, number two is Nick Drake, who I've never heard. Um, something about a moon or something. People talk about his moon record or something like that. So I'll just go Nick Drake's similar artists. Uh, Elliot Smith is the first guy that pops up. I really like Elliot Smith a lot. Talk about a dude that meant it, you know. He took it all the way to the uh, final conclusion. So I don't know. Maybe this guy's like depressed, suicidal, acoustic music or something. So for that type of music, yeah, Elliot Smith is great. Um, Towns Van Zant. I actually have another question coming up about Towns Van Zant. He's the best, period, for that kind of music. Uh, junky, suicidal, loser music or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, Blaze Foley is great. Guys like that. John Prine. I wouldn't put John Prine in the depressed loser suicidal category. Quite the opposite, in fact. But moving, tragic, beautiful, acoustic singer-songwriter stuff. Yeah, those are my guys. I've I've honestly never heard Nick Drake. Uh, number three, Chicago. Uh, great band. I, I just never... You know, I've talked to... Because you mentioned Chicago and Supertramp and Meatloaf. So I'll just go backwards. What I love about Meatloaf is the album art for the Bad Out of Hell album. I'll put it up here on the screen. It looks, I mean, it looks like a <laughs> like a midnight album cover or something. Uh, I had a friend in high school who was really into that record. But um, yeah, I, I love FM radio rock and AOR. Uh, but there's specific bands that I gravitate towards and artists that I gravitate towards. Here you mentioned Chicago, Super Tramp, and Meatloaf. They're all good. Super Tramp, Take the Long Road, Way Home, or whatever. Uh, Chicago, 23 and... What is it? 25 or 6 to 1 or whatever. 25 or 6 to 4. Yeah, that song's cool. Great riff. Um, I actually have a friend, oddly enough, that was in Chicago for a long time. Great guy, but I just don't, yeah, I'm not familiar enough with their catalog to speak about them. For that kind of stuff, like FM, Radio Rock, AOR, which stands for Album Oriented Rock, I guess, you know, the stuff I gravitated towards was like Boston, first Boston album, those guitar harmonies, Um, Thin Lizzy, again, riffs, guitar harmonies, kind of heavy. Uh... Blue Oyster Cult, early Ozzy, um, Tom Petty. Tom Petty, to me, I, I would say like for that kind of music, Tom Petty and Leonard Skinner are probably kind of tied for number one. Uh, so yeah, instead of Meatloaf, I would say Tom Petty or even like Queen. Oh, Bob Seger, definitely Bob Seger. Super underrated because people know his hits or whatever and a lot of his hits are really good but man that guy was heavy is heavy Bob Seger's heavy uh even like the Rolling Stones I really love the Rolling Stones Sticky Fingers album right around that time period um 
street fighting man and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what I got there. If uh, you're unsatisfied with that, Lee, which I wouldn't blame you if you are, I will uh, apply a credit to another question there. All right, Chris, man. Chris, I'm just going to say you can't stop steel. And that'll mean something to you, I'm sure. Hey, Nate, listening to the pod right now, episode 51, I will definitely check out the Tom Petty documentary. Speaking of music docs, have you seen the one on Towns Van Zant called Be Here to Love Me? In my opinion, it's one of the greatest music docs that I have ever seen. For years, I have been telling people to watch it, but it was hard to find. It's now on YouTube. Awesome. I'd love to hear your opinions on it. Keep up the great work. Can't wait to hear what you've been recording. P.S. I learned of Towns through seeing Dax Riggs perform the song Longs about 20 years ago. Yeah, Chris, I have seen that documentary. And the part that I always think about that really stuck with me is uh, when he's talking about, or he's not talking because he fell down a flight of stairs on heroin and didn't make it back up the stairs. But uh, they somebody is talking about him being in the hospital as a young man. I guess he was real fucked up and fell off a second or third story balcony onto concrete, if I'm not mistaken, and had a brain injury. Uh, this was, I think he was in his early 20s when this happened. Maybe even younger. But he was in the hospital and his his sisters and his mother, I believe, were talking about how he, when he woke up, I guess maybe he was in a, it's been a while, so forgive me if I get this wrong, but he was in a coma briefly or something like that, but when he started getting visitors, uh, he, so he lost his memory of his life up to that point, like the dude from Memento, like did, couldn't remember who he was, couldn't remember any of his childhood up to the point of the injury. But his family said he was so brilliant that when they would come in, his sisters or his mom, he would assess the vibe of the situation, assess the age of the people coming in the room, and was so intelligent and perceptive that he was able to figure out in real time, like, oh, this is my mother. Okay, this is my sister. And he was just rolling with it like his memory was perfectly fine. Which is, like, so heavy to me. I mean, that's like... It, a, his intelligence, that's, like, scary, you know? But B, his empathy towards his own family, that he would rather go through all of the mental gymnastics of figuring out who these people are in real time as he's talking to them to spare their feelings from being hurt that he can't remember them. Uh, and I mean, that sort of informs the rest of his story. It's just like tragic and beautiful and profound. Uh, Towns Van Zant for like sad bastard acoustic. I don't know if I'd call it country or folk or what, but, uh, I think it was Chris Christopherson that said Towns Van Zant's the best songwriter that ever lived. And I'll say the same thing while I'm dancing on Bob Dylan's coffee table in my cowboy boots or something like that. But yeah, I highly recommend that documentary and also highly recommend listening to Towns Van Zant. What a legend, man. Okay. Jonathan, uh, you got me, Jonathan in the subject line of the email. He put $10 with a bunch of exclamations and question marks. I was like, Jesus Christ, here we go. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was a, a minor attracted baby metal person or a on the spectrum Argo Slint fan or, or what the hell was going on, but you got me. <laughs> Jonathan says, uh, hope folks don't get too bent out of shape by that. Of all the shit that's out there in the world from war, strife, mass exploitation, and spreaders of lies, it's amazing what people choose to get angry about these days. Thanks for reminding me of the greatness that is Annihilation of the Wicked. I saw Nihil open for Sepultura in Phoenix way back in the day, the Roots era, and my brain wasn't ready for that. 
came around to it later though. Their next two albums, It the Phallic and Those Whom the Gods Detest are also solid, although they kind of lost steam after that. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, yeah, so no question there. Just check out more Nile albums. I'm still stuck on Annihilation of the Wicked. I think I might work backwards and then work forwards until uh sounds like they're running out of steam. So, oh, something else I wanted to mention. Speaking about running out of steam, you know, 10 albums in or whatever, I heard the new Judas Priest record. A lot of stuff came out on Friday. Midnight put out a new record. It's great. Uh, Skeletal Remains put out a record. It's great. Priest. Woo. Uh, we can all safely... I mean, this isn't going to be the album of discussion officially because they don't really need the, you know, attention or whatever. But I did want to just put respect on Judas Priest, man, because I feel like we can all agree, and I would doubt that anybody could debate this, that of any bands that are 50, 40, 30 years into their career, having consistently released material, Judas Priest is doing it the best by far, by far. Their last record, Firepower, was insanely good. And this one is insanely good. Halford sounds like he did on Painkiller pretty much. And uh, the guitar work is what you would come to expect. And then some. You know, it's a different guitar team now. Uh, So there's a couple little different type of vibes here and there with the guitar harmonies and stuff like that. There's a couple borderline kind of, they call it active rock radio, where you hear like Disturbed and stuff like that. There's a couple tracks getting a little too close to that, but I don't know. Maybe when you're in their position, you kind of have to do that or you're expected to do that, uh, which I think is bullshit if that's the case. But for the most part, great record. And uh, yeah, I just want to, you know, I was reading that they're the first band, first metal band that has released albums 50 years apart. And. We got to appreciate them while they're still here, man. You could say they're the greatest metal band ever. I would say Sabbath, but Sabbath never self-identified as metal. Judas Priest was the first band to really like, yeah, come out front and center with the, the look, the sound, the aesthetic, the culture, the camaraderie, all of that. I would say they're the greatest metal band ever. And they still got it, man. Hell yeah. Okay, anything else I'm neglecting here? Yeah, so Saturday, uh, 10 a.m. Central Time. Be on the lookout on this uh, on this channel for my first Zoom guest. TJ from Inner Arma. We talk about all kinds of cool stuff. Favorite drummers, favorite guitar players, favorite albums. We talk about their new album. We talk about... Dude, this guy's been playing in rock bands since he was seven. Opening for Fog Hat and stuff. Like, for for real, playing, like, arena shows and stuff when he's, like, eight, nine, ten years old. Still doing it, dude. <laughs> and uh, the new Inner Armor record will definitely be on my year-end list. And we had a great conversation. And I'm going to start doing more Zoom stuff. I got a few people in mind. I definitely want to get J-Dog on here. I'm speaking it into the ether uh, because it seems like when I say something out loud publicly, for whatever reason, it manifests, you know, Uh, it gives me uh, then it's like I'm scared to fail at it and I have to do it. So up next will be J-Dog. Got a couple more people in mind. But if you have podcast guests that you are interested in me talking to, write me bigriffenergy at gmail.com. Uh, write me questions for the podcast, bigriffenergy at gmail.com. And I will remind you, you can PayPal me 10 bucks and I'll move your question to the front of the line. And thank you to everybody that's been uh, supporting the channel. It's cool. Very few people talking shit and a lot of you uh, saying nice things. So I appreciate it. What else? Shows coming up. Hell's Heroes. Uh, not this weekend, but next weekend. Get your tickets if you haven't already. Um, be there on Friday. Solitude Aeternus. Austin Death Fest in April. Get your tickets to that if you haven't already. 
uh, Austin, you need to prove that you guys are down for the cause. You need to prove you're down, dude, because there's no questioning San Antonio is down. So uh, let's step it up a little bit, shall we? And on that note, I'm going to talk about this mean mistreater record. It's called Razor Wire. Uh, so these guys did, I don't know if it's an EP or a demo, whatever you want to call it, uh, out here in Cedar Creek, Texas with my friend Jeff Henson at Red Nova Ranch. He's, uh, like I said today, I think he's in there finishing up this shit I've been working on since October or whatever. Uh, yeah, it's great. That one sounds great. And then they went to Grammy Greg. <laughs> Grammy Greg Wilkinson, an ear hammer in the Bay Area to do this full length. It's called Razor Wire. Cool artwork, old school. Kind of got a, I mean, it, it suits them perfectly. It's kind of got like a punk DIY underground thing, but also sort of like an 80s metal thing. And uh, here's how they describe themselves. Heavy rock band from Austin, Texas, formed in 2023, armed with heart racing riffs and powerful vocals. They meld classic metal and retro hard rock inspired by bands like Chastain, Warlock, and Wasp. And like I said, I met these folks and didn't even realize it was them until we'd already been hanging out for a while and we had talked about all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, Janice, God damn it, I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, Janice Gonzalez, the singer, and Alex, the guitar player, I believe that that's who I met. I think, I think it was Alex, yeah. Uh, anyway, she had on a like first wave Annihilation Time shirt. And if you know anything about me, you know they're one of my favorite bands of all time. And she grew up with these dudes. Uh, you know, these, these folks are from the Bay Area. And I guess she grew up in Southern California, she mentioned as well. So know a lot of the same people. Uh, being a lifer seems to be a subject that keeps popping up on this podcast. I talked to TJ from Inner Arm a lot about being a lifer, just being in this shit your whole life, you know? And that's the vibe I got. At the Tank Crime show, Annihilation Time was playing over the speakers at the venue uh, because Scotty Tank Crimes discovered that band, just as he discovered many great bands, including Municipal Waste and Dystopia and stuff like that. But I saw Janice's A-Time shirt on, so we started telling stories about that band, of which there are plenty. Uh, and yeah, all of that spirit is in Mean Mistreaters music. I, you know, they talk about Wasp and stuff like that, but I, I hear the West Coast thing too. I hear like people that grew up with Annihilation Time and hanging out around High on Fire and hanging out around Saviors and bands like that. It comes through. Just really good riffs, really good guitar stuff, uh, great vocals. And Janice mentioned that uh, she got sick or something and they were at the studio for like a week, but she couldn't even sing for a lot of that. And so she ended up just having to kind of force herself to do it and only had one day. And I will say you can kind of hear that, but I think it's cool. I think it sounds cool. Uh, Janice's vocals are like powerful. And when she goes up high, there's like an extra rasp to it and like an extra pain and suffering to it. And I think it, I think it sounds cool, man. You know, I remember Brett from Paul Bear telling me that when they recorded their first album, he had the flu or something. And it made him sing in a very specific kind of way. And he was kind of like, it's weird. That's what people came to expect from me is my voice when I'm sick. And so if I'm not sick recording an album, it's almost like it's not the same or something. Uh, but anyway, man, it's very human. That's another thing TJ and I talked about is music sort of losing its humanity and being put on a grid until it's no longer exciting and quantized and pitch corrected and sound replaced until it's barely representative of human beings, you know? So I think it's precious when a band puts out an album that's just real and it's them and that the humanity is left intact. And that's what I would say about this mean mistreater record. Yeah. For fans of all the bands they mentioned, uh, I would mention for fans of annihilation time, early Aussie, uh, 
Tower from New York City. Anybody heard Tower? Great band. Sanhedrin. Uh, Haunt, maybe. It's their little... They're a little more rock slash punk attitude than those bands, but somewhere in that vicinity. So for fans of just like classic badass guitar music with epic, powerful, clean vocals, Mean Mistreater, one of the most exciting bands in Austin on their rise to world domination via Big Riff Energy. Uh, and it was great to meet you guys. Had a good time. So yeah, man, thank God for people like Scotty Tank Crimes and Tony Foresta. That, that Tank Crimes tour, had a, it has a vibe. It has a vibe uh, that's sorely missing in the touring world of heavy music right now. Where it's like, um, these two guys have poured, well, and everybody involved, I will say, everybody involved. Uh, Dead Heat is sort of a newer band, but I know those guys have been working for a while now in other ventures and just in the scene in general, right? But these people have poured their hearts and souls and literal blood, sweat, and tears and uh, mental health and <laughs> physical health and everything into Big Riff Energy for decades, man, for decades. And attending that show, it was very obvious that this wasn't something put together by fucking nerds at Live Nation who have never been in a van or fucking nerds in an office, some corporate building that bought a beloved heavy metal record so that they could exploit the back catalog and, and not build new artists. Uh, it didn't have that vibe. It had the vibe of people who have been in vans for 20 years and who are obsessed and in love with music at a level that most people would not understand and at a level that would break 99% of people. <laughs> so I love Scotty at Tank Crimes. I love Municipal Waste and Necrot and Ghoul and Dead Heat and real DIY shit. Uh, thank you guys. So that tour is still going on for a minute. Go see it. Uh, if you're into this world at all and you don't go, you're a fucking poser. <laughs> but I don't think they're going to miss you because I'm pretty sure that uh, every show has sold out, which is awesome. Okay, um, that's it, man. Saturday, 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, see what kind of nonsense juxtaposed with profound wisdom pours out of the mouth of the beautiful, mighty, talented, lifer TJ Childers from Inter Arma. And uh, yeah, write me with ideas for Zoom guests and send me your questions. BigRiffEnergy at gmail.com. Hopefully this goddamn record is finished this week. I'm excited. All right. See you Saturday.